Welcome, everybody, to the CFL Weekly Pick'em Show. We're at Week 16 on the Grueling Truth Radio Network. The CFL Pick'em Show is brought to you by Power Plus Mouthguards, Replenishing Care and Technologies, uh, MyBookie.ag, and probably a couple other ones I can't remember. I'm kidding. But if you want to be a sponsor of the CFL Pick'em Show, just drop us a line on Twitter at The Grueling Truth. Um, I am your host, Mike Goodpaster. Right now I want to welcome in my co-host, First up, we've got Brian Schmidt, who also does the NFL Pick'em Show with us and the College Football Pick'em Show. Um, how you doing, Brian? I do a lot of Pick'em Shows, but the one thing I don't do is pick my nose. Well, I've been around you before, and we know that's not true. Next up, we've got another man who picks his nose, and he usually rolls it up and smokes it after he does. Um, <laughs> he is... Ooh. He is also a co-host on the NFL Pick'em Show and also does the Rouge, White, and Blue with Joe Pritchard on the Grueling Truth Radio Network, which you can check all of his work out at thegruelingtruth.net. Help me welcome to the show, Oz Davis. Hi. Good evening, everybody, for listening. Um, what can I say? I, I, I've got to be one of the few Americans who actually does two CFL podcasts a week. Don't you think? I don't know. I've never really thought about it. I think so. I'm going to put that on my resume. All right. I put a lot into that, you know, introduction, and that's all I got back. A little disappointed. But, all right, let's go ahead and let's start off with last week's games. Um, The Saskatchewan Rough Riders completed a great comeback in the fourth quarter, handed the Ottawa Red Blacks an 18-17 defeat. Ottawa controlled momentum for most of that game, Oz, and shut out the Riders in the first half. The quarterback, Kevin Glenn, turned things around late in the fourth quarter to claim his 100th career win. What was your take on this game, and especially Saskatchewan, especially with the defense, because the Riders' defense was kind of ignored most of the year, but over the last month or so has really stepped up. Yeah, well, they've had to. I mean, the offense has only put together 27 points, right, in the past two games. So it's, it's a good idea for them to, to find their defense. But how do you like the special teams with Jeff Knox winning the game on a rouge? How about that? But in any well, case, yeah, I was, I was a bit surprised. I said last week I, I, I predicted that uh, Kevin Glenn would not start this game because he was having hand issues. He had, he had had a, a wrist or hand injury that last week he still looked like he was recovering from. And the stats for this game is, aren't that great. You know, I've got uh, 20 of 32 for 252 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. So not great. But you get that intangible leadership kind of stuff with, coming down the stretch in the fourth quarter, which is why they scored 11 points and won that game in the fourth quarter. Um, good on Mr. Glenn for doing, I don't know, psychologically, um, socially, what he could not do physically. And nice way to get a Thunder win. So Saskatchewan's on a roll. All right, and that brings us to Ottawa, Brian. You had William Powell had to be the star of the game, 27 carries, or 26 carries, 187 yards, played his ass off. Ryan Lindley. Played better than he did the week before, but still 17 for 31, a touchdown and an interception. Right now they're two games back behind Toronto. They get Trevor Harris back, it looks like, this week. Right, Oz? Uh, Yes, yep. He was taking reps with the first team, and it's pretty much assumed he's going to play. So is this – so my question, Schmitty, is this. Is it too late for them to save their season with Trevor Harris? Uh, It's not – too late, but the, they're on life support, and you know, at any at any moment, somebody could trip over the plug. Uh, not too late, but it. Boy, you got to bring it now because uh, you, you you can't afford any slip ups at this point. So yeah, they have uh, to win up to have any chance here, I would think. So it, it, it's uh, it'd be interesting to see how how how. Uh, how they play this week in terms of playing with that uh, that bit of uh, uh, an attitude, a bit of a you know sense of you know we got to get this done. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they come out because uh, that that's really going to tell a lot uh, whether this season's done or not. 
All right, that brings us to the next game where I would usually start off with you, but I I cannot ignore this. I have to start off with Oz, and Oz, you know where I'm going with this. The Calgary Stampeders cruised in their 10th straight victory with a 59-11 win over the Montreal Alouettes on Friday night at McMahon Stadium. What's up with the Alouettes? (laughs) What what do you want me to tell you? I mean, Anthony Calcio, yeah, sure, he's, indisputably top three CFL quarterbacks of all time, maybe top one of all time. Uh, But I'm sorry, he's not an offensive coordinator. I mean, he was barely a quarterback's coach. Literally, I think career he's had 14 games as a quarterback's coach and now about six as an offensive coordinator. I mean, sorry, that's just not going to work. And, you know, like I was talking about last week, guess who didn't see the field at all? I don't even think he was at the game, Darian Durant. Well, if you're not playing, in his defense, who would want to watch Montreal play right now? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it was like that last week was like a say and error for him. And, you know, as a result, uh, bye-bye to the season as well. I I mean, this is horrible. I mean, we have no offensive coordinator. We have no, I don't even know who the defensive coordinator is, to be honest with you. I really don't know uh, because I don't care. But it was, it was nice to see Calgary go to work on him, huh? I guess. Um, Brian, I great. guess we'll, we'll bring you with Calgary, which is not much to say. They do what they always do. The one thing that got me, though, was Terry Williams, 16 carries for 156 yards. So I guess they don't need Jerome Messam. Um, at least against <laughs> Montreal, they don't. So what's your take on Calgary right now and how they're playing? Well, th- this was a a great uh, – what we talk about constantly with Calgary is as it gets closer to playoff time, they seem to bring it to another another level. And this is a great example uh, – yeah, granted, yes, it was Montreal, which is a little bit like playing a bunch of one-year-old babies, but uh, they still – Yeah, there you go. But, but they still came out, and, and they dominated. They, uh, they, they did everything that you should be doing at this time of year as you start pushing to the playoffs. And, and, and again, now, now you found the guy that, you know, Replaces, you know, Jerome Messam. I mean, you know, they they always seem to find guy. Again, you know, we we always say how they're the New England Patriots of the uh, CFL. It, they always seem to find guys to plug in the spots when they need to be plugged in. All right, that brings us to the next game, which was a thriller. Uh, the Toronto Argonauts completed an impressive comeback, forty three thirty five overtime victory against the Hamilton Tie Cats was some questionable officiating, to say the least, in the game. Quarterback Ricky Ray led it with 330 yards, three touchdown passes on 25 comple- completions. Receiver Devere Posey had a great game, 104 yards, two TDs. Um, Brian, right now with Ricky Ray, I mean, James Wilder didn't have a 100-yard game again, but, I mean, he played really well. I mean, how big a threat? Can these guys make a run at a great cup, do you think? I, I think I think they can, uh, and, and the reason I, I, I think that is this, when you have a guy like Ricky Ray and, 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 and you have some of the pieces that they have around now uh, that are doing you know doing well. They they found a running game at times. Uh, this is a team that when you have a dangerous quarterback and you're in the playoffs, anything can happen. Uh, we've seen that consistently year in and year out. Anything can happen. So, so I think, you know, they could be as dangerous as anybody else. All right. Then we go to Hamilton, who played well again. Jeremiah Masoli had a good game through two touchdown passes, no interceptions. C.J. Gable, 18 carries for 157 yards, two touchdowns. And then they trade him to Edmonton off. I mean, yeah, what's right. going on there? Do you like what, this trade or? Well, I do not get this at all. I don't. Well, I, okay, you get it a little bit because Gable's uh, hitting free agency next year. I mean, he's his contract is up. They're probably not going to keep him because they're doing away with Ken Austin's uh, picks. They're getting rid of his guys right now, getting you know shuffling them off. So he's gone. 
Um, so, so that makes sense. But all they got for him was the rights to two American players, not two American players, not draft picks, not even scrubs, right? Not even international scrubs, right? That this is what gets me. And the thing is, is like this is a classic move that we see in North American sports all the time. You know, down the stretch run, we're out of it, so we trade away our big money players. Except that they're not out of it, right? I mean, you guys just got done telling me that Ottawa is in a do or die situation. Well, yeah, they're but, ahead uh, of I mean, you're, you're, wait a second, Oz. Oz. Hamilton is in this thing. No, they're not. They, they can come in second place in the East right now. The way that they've been playing lately? They're a couple games back still from that, but all right, I'll give you that. They're still in it. I mean, I mean, it's just, Unless maybe I, I, they don't think they're in it, which then they're not in it. Right, right, right. If, if this is the signal that we're giving it up, fine. And, and I mean, but, but again, what stuns me on that is how could you not get anything immediately for it? Now, they must be really confident that they can sign at least one of these two American guys because otherwise they gave them up for nothing which is what they would have done in free agency, and why would you do that if you can have them for five more games? All right, that brings us to the next game. Joe Pritchard's Winnipeg Blue Bombers um, <laughs> had a solid road showing, improved to 10-3, and three, um, made enough key plays to win the game against Edmonton. What's your take here, Oz? I mean, to me, Winnipeg is the only team right now that I could really see challenging Calgary. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's a bit of a shame because they're going to have to uh, – the Bombers are going to have to go to Calgary. And in a playoff atmosphere, you know, the Calgary people are used to it at this point. They know what to do. So uh, that's not going to be nice. <laughs> that, that, that's a serious disadvantage. And this was another thing, too, that works in Ottawa's favor. Again, going back to is Ottawa out of it. Um, Ottawa gets the Grey Cup this year. That's the Grey Cup team. If they're the home team in the playoffs like they were last year, they could easily take another Grey Cup, even with Trevor Harris just coming in now. Easy, easy, no problem with a losing record and all. But anyway. Wait a second. Anyway. I think they were a lot better team last year at this point oh, than sure. they are right now, though. Oh, sure. They have, they have half the 1,000-yard receivers that they had last year. Right? The special teams aren't as good. The defense, I would argue, is a little bit better, and they don't have Burris. But you were telling me earlier that Trevor Harris is the second best quarterback. I like Harris better. I'm just sorry. I just don't think the rest of the team's quite as good. No, I think they'll round into shape in time. I think they'll round into shape in time to win at least one playoff game, especially if they're at home. Especially if yeah, they're the at home, you can not going to be Toronto game. is. Huh? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Good, good, good. There'll be a good race coming down the stretch. But anyway, on this game, um, you know, this is the kind of game I said on the Rouge, White, and Blue. This is the kind of game that talking heads say, oh, this is tail is two halves. Uh, eight to nothing at halftime. You don't really expect that in the CFL until it gets a little bit later in the winter. You know, when it gets cold, you expect that eight nothing at half. Um, some nice defense. Just, I don't know, just inability to punch it through. You know, neither team was getting away with the big play, basically. The defenses were doing a really nice job holding this stuff down. Like, like I speculated on the show last week, the Edmonton defense had enough time to form a coherent game plan. They actually looked good on defense. They looked coordinated together on defense. So that was nice to see. Um, other than that, I mean, what can you say? Edmonton, even on offense, is – depleted um and that was enough that was the difference you know um, yeah, but, um, Riley, mike riley may be a miracle worker but he just doesn't have enough yeah but i think now with the addition of cj gable brian i think this becomes a lot more dangerous team oh absolutely you you know a team that now you just gave him another weapon that can take some of the heat off of riley too maybe kill some of that pass rush exactly i mean it it, it certainly it don't hurt uh, at this point, uh, anytime you can add a weapon, that, and, and not only, uh, you know, from a receiving standpoint, special teams, everything else, but when you can add a weapon like this, it, it, it's giving you an opportunity uh, because they need that right now. I mean, I mean, it's Riley, and, and right now with all the injuries and things that have happened, it, it's, you know, it's a one-man show. And, and, and we saw with Toronto, 
you know, Ricky Ray, it was a one-man show. But when we started seeing the running game start to come into play and some of these receivers start to step off where it was taking some of the pressure off, you know, now we're right. talking about the team as being uh, a contender. So it can do nothing but help. Right. All right. We'll go ahead and pick this week's games, week 16. We'll start off with Friday night. We've got the Hamilton Tiger Cats at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I'll go ahead and start it off. I I think this could be a tough game for Winnipeg. Hamilton hadn't backed down at all from anybody, especially since June Jones has taken over. But I like Winnipeg in this game, Brian. Yeah, I do too. Uh, Winnipeg is is an outstanding team and and, and certainly a, a threat. Uh, to, to win a great cup. I, I really like this Winnipeg team, and, and, and I've kind of jumped on their bandwagon a little bit because I, I really like watching them. Uh, they're a really good team to watch. All right, Oz. Okay, so Winnipeg's an easy pick, but let me ask you this. Do you take Winnipeg minus 13 points, which is what the line at my bookie is right now? I would say no. I would take Hamilton in that case. Uh-huh. What about you, Brian? Do you take Hamilton? Uh, I, would, I would take Hamilton in that case as well, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Because, yeah, I was thinking about this one, but in the end I decided cooler heads should prevail. So, yeah, I'll just I'll just take Winnipeg to win. All right. Um, next game, Saskatchewan at Toronto. I think Toronto is like a one-point favorite, aren't they? One and a half. One and a half. All right, so Saskatchewan at Toronto. Big game for both teams. Oz, who you got? Uh, I got Saskatchewan. Look, much is being made much is being made about Toronto being on a three game winning streak and, and getting stuff together. And Ricky Ray was awesome last week. I think he found like about ten different guys uh, for targets. You know, that's nice compared to what he was doing in the first two, three weeks when he was finding, you know, S J Green over and over and over again. But those three wins have come against Montreal, Montreal, and Hamilton, okay? I don't believe that they can handle a Western power, really, to be honest, like Saskatchewan right now. I'll take Saskatchewan away. I'll take them plus the one and a half, too, if you want to give it to me. All right, Brian. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to take Saskatchewan. Uh just, just a, a gut feeling. Uh, really, nothing technical. Just, just a gut feeling. The way they're playing, the things they're doing, uh, uh, and it just, and it just feels like a game that that, that they'll win. I, I, I mean, there's really no scientific reason other than the fact I just have a gut feeling that they're going to win. Oh yes, right. and it should be mentioned. It should be mentioned too that Trent Richardson will debut in this game for the Riders, and I, for one, think he's going to have a decent game. I don't, because his problem is he's a straight-ahead runner that makes no cuts and the field's bigger. I think he'll be a complete bust. What do you think, Brian? Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, I think, A, it's going to be what kind of shape he's in. I think, B, it's going to be, uh, you know, what they do with him. Uh, I agree. He's, he's always been kind of a straight-ahead guy. Uh, but that being said, uh you know, like Jerome, you know, Messam, I mean, is kind of a straight-ahead guy, too, and he has some success. But, but uh, it'll be interesting to see, but I, I, I don't know. I'm not – I'm not – I've never really been sold on him anyway, so, you know. Yeah, I don't, me I don't, neither. All right, I'm going to go with Toronto since you guys are both going with Saskatchewan. My reason is Saskatchewan's offense has not played well as of late, and I just – I like Ricky Ray. I like what Wilder's doing. I think this is a dangerous team right now. I think it'll be a close game, but I'll take Toronto. The next game, the Ottawa Red Blacks with Trevor Harris at the BC Lions, Brian. With Trevor Harris, I'll go with Ottawa. Yeah, I agree. With Trevor Harris, I'm going with Ottawa. Oz? It seems like the BC Lions haven't played in forever, but uh, and nobody cares but it's only actually been one week. Uh, how many games have they lost in a row? They've lost like four or five in a row now, right? There's yeah. three teams with really long losing streaks going right now, and they're one of them. Uh, playing at home, I guess this line, because the BC Lions are favored by four and a half, is all about going east to west. Um, because I can't figure – and maybe they're counting that Trevor Harris will be rusty. 
Um, but since you guys both took Ottawa, I'll take BC. What the hell? I'll take BC in the upset, and I'll definitely take them plus four. Uh, I won't take them minus four and a half, though. It's well, going to be BC's minus four and a half, right? Yeah, it's going to be closer than that. It's going to be so how are you going to take them in the upset since they're favored? Well, they shouldn't be favored. Do you really think? They shouldn't be favored. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I would say with Trevor Harris not playing in forever, maybe. But I'm going to go with Ottawa. I just like Trevor Harris. So, there. The next game we have. <laughs> Fine. What? Fine. That's that's a good point. <laughs> the next game we got the pathetic Montreal Alouettes, who are you know Oz's team, hosting the Edmonton Eskimos. What's the point spread on this? About seventy three. Seven and a half. No, seven and a half. Seven. I'll give you seven and a half and take Edmonton all day long. What do you think, Oz? <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's tough to argue with that. I guess they're counting on six game losing streak versus seven game losing streak. But with C.J. Gable there and... Yeah, but the difference is this. I mean, number one, Edmonton has a real live quarterback. Number two, I think Edmonton's played a lot tougher schedule. Number three, Edmonton's been in all those games, or most of those games. It's not like they're playing terrible. No, no, they're making do. They they dropped this stat during the last game where I think they've played, they've suited up 79 different guys this season, though. And I believe the CFL goes with, what, 46, 48-man rosters? It's not NFL 53, but so in, in any case, that's a lot of players. So they've had a lot of turnover, but they're still staying competitive. They're going to make the playoffs. You know, they, they, Montreal won't, but Edmonton will. So, yeah, I guess I'm definitely going Edmonton. I guess I'd take them by seven and a half. They'll win by more than eight. Sure. All right, Brian. Don't even have to get in a long conversation about this, Edmonton. By a bunch. All righty. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap the show up then. And, Brian, since you were a man of few words, we'll let you have the final say, or your final say. Well, I'm excited that we're we're in the home stretch and playoff races are going to be exciting. And eventually we'll get here to the playoffs, which, which becomes even more exciting. So uh, it, it should be a fun weekend of football. All right. Oz? Um, oh, nothing much to add. I just want to say happy Canadian Thanksgiving. It's happy Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. Okay. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving to you too, Oz. <laughs> sure. I mean, in case anybody Canadian is listening to the podcast. Do you celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving in California? Oh, of course not. Of course not. No. You do? No, you of course, course not. not. Of course not. No way. Are you kidding there's not that many Canadians out here. There are quite a few, I'm sure, but not so many that we would celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah. Could be a reason to eat a turkey. <laughs> Schmitty, you like to eat turkey. You'll celebrate it with me, won't you? I'll celebrate it with you. Well, hell yeah. We'll drive on up here and we'll have us a turkey. What day is Canadian Thanksgiving? It's actually technically the Monday, but I was discussing this with uh, Joe Pritchard of the Bruce White Blue CFL podcast right here at the Green Well, that's Street why they usually play a Monday game and, on it, isn't it? And, yeah, right. So you get the day off of work and everything, but most people apparently are pretty smart about it and don't actually have, like, the big drunk food fest on Monday because they have to go to back to work on Tuesday. So they usually do the debauchery on, like, Saturday, Sunday. Debauchery. And then uh, Monday, Monday just watch sports. They go watch hockey because hockey just opened this week. Too. Yeah, so they and go, anybody they that likes that. hockey, check out our NHL podcast, which we do weekly called The Puck Guys with Jason Lamb and Patrick Mahoney. You also can go to thegrillingtruth.net right now and check out the first power rankings of the season where Brian Schmidt's Pittsburgh Penguins are ranked number one. Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo. But. So make sure you check that out, too, guys. Um, hopefully Robert Drummond will be back next week. He couldn't make it this weekend. He had some work issues that he had to take care of. So hopefully he'll be back. So make sure you catch us next week. We'll recap all these games. And I did want to bring up last week I was 4-0, I believe, Brian. Well, that's good. Okay. Well, see, if it would have been you, you would have been texting me right as the fourth game ended. But... <laughs> And 
Oz didn't get anything right again. But all right, guys, what? make sure you. Ch- <laughs> Yeah, make I sure you took, check. Yeah, I took Montreal over Calgary. Yeah, that was me. Make Come sure on. I know you did. Make sure that no. you guys check out mybookie.ag, our sponsor to Grilling Truth. Also, replenishing care and technologies, Power Plus mouth guards. You can check out all of our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, anywhere you find sports podcasts. You'll find the Grilling Truth. So for Oz Davis, Brian Schmidt. I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.